Hey guys, welcome to your first video of uh, this web series in which we're going to create a social media application with Ionic and uh, Angular and Firebase and UploadCare, stuff like that. So in this video, I just want to quickly go over through our setup and how everything should look like so that we can basically just spend our time on development and not waste our time on little small other things. So starting off with Ionic, we have some good news with Ionic and that is basically you can now use any UI layer you want with Ionic, whether it's Vue or React or Angular or any other framework or if you want to go vanilla, Ionic is also working on that. But we're going to still make use of Angular only with Ionic because number one, that is the most supported kind of release you can say right now with Ionic and has worked a lot. Number two, it has a very broad community support. Vue and React um, really aren't that much supported at the moment. They are still heavily under development and Ionic themselves does not recommend working on them um, for the production applications yet. The other thing is that we need to set up some accounts first but we'll do that meanwhile we are installing our Ionic. So this was basically the slide I wanted to start off this video with, but I eventually forgot. So anyway, we're going to create the social media app using Angular, Ionic, Upload Gear, Firebase as our tech stack, you can say. So the first thing we have to do is just set up the development interface, the development environment, rather I should say, which involves Ionic, VS Code. Well, you're free to use any other text editor you want, but the uh, I would really highly recommend you if you go with VS Code, it's pretty awesome and comes with a lot of extensions and you know it feels good to code in VS Code. Then we have Firebase and Upload Care obviously. So the first thing is we need to get our hands to some terminal and you can already see that I have a Ionic project going on here but I'm just gonna go ahead and just remove it and we're gonna do it again from start so first things first what you need to do is need to get node and npm on your systems if you don't have that installed then I have link in the description of this video go ahead set up node and npm on your system by watching that video once you're done with that you should be able to see npm v saying you something like six point something or maybe you know a uh, newer version if you're watching this in future and node should also say something like that right once you're done with that what you want to do is uh, do npm install g ionic and latest just do this once it's no harm if you still have ionic installed in the system this command will just update your ionic to the latest one right and the other thing you need to do is install cordova as well well, you know, Ionic is actually working on its own implementation known as Capacitor. So Cordova and Capacitor kind of would do the same thing, but Ionic is creating it itself. But again, for the reasons I have mentioned, better community support, longer, you know, it has been there for quite a while. We're going to still work with Cordova only. So you're going to do npm install g Cordova latest as well just so we have the correct tools right at the moment 4.6.0 ionic is uh, um, what's in the market so the next thing we have to do is ionic start and uh, you need to name your project so i'm just going to keep it like app hit enter what it would do is uh, it would ask you a couple of questions obviously we want to use ionic 4 it's in release candidate now it gives you four, um, three templates, I guess. And I think I should have started it with the, the angular type flag, but let's just see how it goes. So once it's done, it will try to initialize a Git repository here, as you can see, for your version control. It's okay, you can keep it. Then it will ask you if you want to install the app flow, SDK, and you know stuff like that. Just um, go ahead and press no there. It's, it's just some commercial stuff Ionic is offering you. You can always take a look at that later on. It's always possible to integrate that later. But for now, we're going to just keep it that way. 
if you go to your um, app directory now and do an ionic v you're going to see some information about uh, um, your ionic cli and uh, whatever you can use commands like that right and if you open this inside vs code our editor of our choice what we're going to see is uh, oof, macbook air 2015 well, I really want to upgrade this laptop, but uh, <laughs> let us see. Okay, so that's embarrassing, but I'm going to try one more time and hope it works this time. Come on, MacBook. What are you doing? Ah, come on. There we go. All right. So we have our project set up and running, not really running, just set up for the moment. And uh, you can see all that Angular stuff. And yeah, one more thing, this would be built on Angular. So if you're not familiar with Angular, I do have my playlist for Angular as well in the description, check it out. You just need a very basic introduction to Angular. I would not say complete the whole playlist. I would just say, just you know, get yourself familiarized. And obviously you need to know JavaScript. There's no doubt about that. So once you're done with Angular and stuff, once you're comfortable with this thing, at least you should understand what's going on here. Once you are at that level, we can proceed onward. So for the code part, what we have at the moment is you can go ahead and do an Ionic serve and say a lab. Now, what does this do? it would start a local development server which would hot reload what we are doing what what changes we are doing here inside our text editor and will reflect it in a browser now remember that ionic is nothing but on a very high level ionic is nothing but taking your application and putting it inside a web browser inside your android app right so basically you're writing a web app anyway which you put on a mobile device, which is optimized in such a way that it looks and feels like it's a native application. However, under the hood, it's working as a web page, right? So to actually build the application, we do not really have to have all those emulators and stuff um, present at our disposal because we are working essentially with a web application, which should be which, which should be testable on a web browser itself, right? So we see that uh, um, it uh, would have asked me for that Ionic lab question. I'm not sure why it answered itself, but let's answer. You just have to answer this. Yes, an Ionic lab is nothing, but it just provides you an interface, nice and clean interface of uh, showing how your application would look like on um, Android or maybe iOS, but it's nothing really. They're just using iframes to embed the Ionic page. And uh, basically I'll just let you. So there we go. Once it's done, it would open this automatically, right? It says browser window open to localhost 8200. All right, so this is basically what they are, these guys are doing. Just pre present you with the iOS and Android version of how your project would look like, right? So we are up and running with our Ionic project. The next thing I want you guys to do is to go ahead and go to firebase.com, which would eventually take you to console.firebase, something like that. You have to create a project. Just create any project, right? And basically, yeah, just let it sit there because we're going to need Firebase here for authentication purposes, for storing user data, for, you know, storing database of database schema, how our database should look like and stuff like that. We're not really going to use a real backend here for image hosting as a service. We're going to use Upload here, which also happens to sponsor this video. And for the database part, we're gonna make use of Firebase for all the handling of uh, whose friend is who, and uh, you know your profile data stuff like that. A typical use case of Firebase, right? So 
with Firebase being done, what else do we have? Uh, there we go. And uh, uh, upload care, yeah. So for upload care, I don't think we do need a lot of stuff at the moment from starting. But what you have to do essentially is go ahead and sign up for a free account at upload care. Free account would do. You can obviously upgrade later on as, as your usage grows or as your traffic grows. I'm on a hacker plan at the moment, but uh, what we want essentially is uh, the docs. So we're gonna make use of upload gear endpoints to host our images, to get our effects, filters, cropping images, detecting the type of device and serving it right content so that we do not overshoot the user's bandwidth, stuff like Instagram and companies do, right? So once you have an account on upload gear, you're ready at that aspect as well. So at the end of uh, this video, I hope you guys are up and running with Ionic. You guys know um, what the hell this is, Angular code, stuff like that, right? You guys have a Firebase account and a project setup and you guys are sitting comfortably in your chair because things are about to go really, uh, I should say, fast now. So yeah, I think that's all for this video and uh, I'll see you then in the next one. We're gonna, we're gonna start off with some real code and get our hands dirty. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe so that you get notification of when I release the next video and videos similar to that. Don't forget to like the video and that's all for this one. See you then in the next video.